step three, memory source memory or MSM. This is our third link architecture and it's basically the opposite of MIM architecture. So we replace the BSA in the middle that was there in the MIM and we re replace it with a source of entangled photons. So this way both of the uh, repeaters become receivers and both are equipped with their local BSA. Now both nodes can make efficient use of their quantum memories. We saw in the previous step, in the case of memory-memory or MM link architecture, that placing the BSA inside a repeater actually uh, gains us quite nice advantages. So this way we can place it in both. Both of the repeater nodes are um, uh, receivers, therefore they can make very fast decisions about what to do with their memories, and this way we minimize the lock time of these memories. And at the same time, we still need classical messages being exchanged between both receiving stations. So how does MSM work? This time, the source produces entangled pairs in regularly spaced bins, which we're going to index with small k. And the total number of bins will be denoted by capital K. One uh, round lasts um, the following, following uh, length of time. Again, we have to send a message from the source to the receiver, which takes a time t-link. And we also have to take into account the total time it takes to generate those k photons, which is given by capital K times t-clock. And again, both receivers, they have to uh, write a log of the measurement successes or failures for each individual photon. Here, J is indexing the memory of the receiver, and K is indexing the photon. Here the key difference is that previously the number of photons that were used uh, in order to try and establish an entangled link was limited by the number of memories at the sender node. Here the photons are produced by the source and we are not limited by the number of memories anymore. This is the control protocol for the MSM link architecture. It's very similar to the MM link architecture, except over here we replaced uh, previously index i, indexing the number of photons, with index k, which runs over the number of bins. So, we start by initializing the receiver index j to 1 and the bin index k also to 1. And in this internal loop, we try to uh, establish entanglement using the photons coming from the source and the photons coming from the memory in the local BSA. So as long as there are three memories at the receiving end, which we check over here, then we uh, continue this loop that tries to uh, establish entanglement. As well as long as there are photons incoming from the source. If one of these runs out, then we exit the loop and we, try, we wait for the classical messages to arrive and then act accordingly and maybe consume the entanglement that's, that's established between the two receiving stations. And finally, we synchronize to the uh, time of each round. The performance of the MSM link can be calculated in the following way. Now we need three probabilities. We also have to include the probability that we can actually generate a photon pair at the source, given by P source. And then uh, we can have different probabilities of the BSA success on the left node and on the right node. Although in our analysis, we're just going to be, uh, set them to be equal for simplicity. So assuming symmetric uh, probabilities for left and right BSA, the probability uh, of uh, successfully establishing an entangled link for MSM architecture is given by the following expression. We need to uh, succeed with our BSA twice. That's why we have PBSA squared here. And also, two photons need to arrive from the source, one to the left node and one to the right node. Hence, it's P-fiber squared. And we have to mul uh, multiply this whole expression by the probability of successfully generating the photon pair at the source. We can rewrite it using our previous success probability P, which we used in the MIM and MM link. Doing this, we can immediately see that the probability of success for an MSM link is actually lower than the probability of success for MM link and for MIM link. However, this is not such a huge issue because this time we can control the number of attempts that are used in each round just simply by generating more photons at the source. The average rate 
for single memory and fast clock cycle is given by the following expression. It's the probability of a successful BSA times the probability that the photon does not get lost in the fiber, divided by two times T-link, the communication delay. We can compare this for um, the, sec uh, the average rate for MIM architecture, and we see a big difference. There is a factor of two, which is not that important, but the really big importance is this factor over here, P-fiber and P-fiber squared. We see that the MIM link actually is proportional to P-fiber squared, meaning that its average rate is a lot, more, um, a lot more susceptible to photon loss. And this is one of the advantages of MSM architecture, that even in lossy environments, our rate does not suffer as much as it would have in, uh, in using other architectures, such as MIM or MM. So this makes this uh, architecture potentially suitable for early prototypes of quantum networks. Second interesting fact is that this average is independent of the photon generation probability P source. And this is simple because we can actually control how many photons we are uh, generating at the source. So all we have to do is just increase the total number of bins. So the expression for our MSM here is independent of the probability of generating the entangled photons at the source, as long as the number of uh, bins, capital K, squares inverse proportionally to P source. And also know that we require very fast hardware. The clock cycle must be much, much shorter than the communication delay given by T-Link. Now let's consider where do we actually put this source. So far we are thinking about um, either the BSA in the MIM architecture or in the MSM as something put on the ground. But there is no need for that. We can even install it on a satellite and launch it into orbit. So, Ground-based links are relatively short. They have to repeat every 20 kilometers or so. This is simply due to the um, attenuation in the fiber. So scaling to a long distance requires very many repeater nodes. On the other hand, if we put the uh, source into a satellite, then the source can produce these photons and send them to ground stations loca located on the ground. And because of um, the uh, position of the satellite above uh, ground, the distance between the two memories or between the two receiving stations increases to m more orders of magnitude. And it's not just limited by the order of tens of kilometers. In fact, such an experiment was uh, performed relatively recently uh, by Chinese satellite Mishius. The entanglement was distributed over a total distance of 1,200 kilometers, which is quite astonishing and the average two-photon count rate was 1.1 Hz. And the achieved fidelity was just shy of 0.87. There were some problems with this, uh, with this um, implementation of the MSM link, notably that uh, the losses occurred mainly in the lowest 10 kilometers of the atmosphere. Above that, uh, basically the photons were traveling in vacuum, at least in terms of the probability of attenuation. But also, uh, the engineers and experimentalists had to deal with the spreading of the beam coming from the, coming from the satellite, meaning that the spreading of the beam uh, became much larger than the radius of the uh, receiving telescope, so losses occurred there as well. And also, because the satellite pl was placed in LOE, or lower Earth orbit, the link was only available twice per day, for six minutes. Despite these uh, shortcomings, uh, the satellite-based entanglement distribution seems like a potentially attractive path to truly global quantum internetworks, purely based on the fact that it's much simpler to deploy. If we want to connect uh, two uh, ground stations that are separated by 1,200 kilometers, we would need extremely many repeater stations in between. Here we just need one satellite. That concludes our discussion of MSM uh, link. And in the next step, we're going to learn about a completely new architecture that doesn't use any stationary qubits.